God is good. And, amen. He's greatly to be praised. Amen. Why don't we stand to our feet all together as you uh, remain standing for a moment. I'll ask that you open your Bibles uh, to the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 26, Romans 8, 26, Ephesians 6 and 12 as well, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. And as you're turning there, I just want to take a moment and uh, just honor those that uh, that have been involved in this revival, honor every one of you that have come out last night. I mean, what an incredible move of God. The Lord showed up and, and healed people here in this, in this altar. I believe that's a result of God showing up. Amen? Result of true faith being here in the room. So I'm grateful for what we experienced. And uh, of course, I want to honor uh, the leaders here in this church, Pastor Haney, Pastor Lopez, and their families. I appreciate them so very much. So grateful for them and just all they've done for this amazing church and revival in this city. Uh, why don't we give a little round of applause for the leadership in this church. And uh, I honor, of course, all of the uh, the pastors uh, that that are here, all the pastoral staff, so grateful for them as well. Many of them are friends, and so uh, it's good to see them. Uh, I also honor my wife and my boys that I love very much, and I'm so glad. I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but we do have another one on the way. Did I say that already? So, amen. We are uh, growing the kingdom. One way or another, we are growing the kingdom. <laughs> And so I honor my family. I'm so grateful for them um, and blessed to be here with every one of you. Romans chapter 8, <clears throat> verse 26. The Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And Ephesians 6 and verse 12 tells us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Can we go ahead and put our Bibles to one side? Why don't we lift up our hands and, and just thank God for what he's already done and ask that he align our heart with what he's about to do here tonight. Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to be in this place. I pray that you would anoint my mind and Loose my tongue to speak your word and that you touch every heart of every individual in this place. I thank you for what you're about to do here in this room and every miracle, every healing that you've already done, God. I give you all the honor and all the glory. We love you and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Why don't we clap our hands all together and why don't we just lift up our voice for a moment and just thank God. Would you lift up your voice and praise God for a moment? I want to talk to you for a brief moment uh, on the power of an intercessor, the power of an intercessor. Shake somebody's hand next to you. I know you already did this, but go ahead and do that. Shake somebody's hand and tell them the power of an intercessor. After that, you may be seated. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, I know that this is an apostolic church because, you know, when, when we do a quick meet and greet, usually somebody's got to get here and say, all right, go ahead, you can, you can sit down now because you all like to fellowship, right? That's a good thing. That's what the Bible said that the apostles did, so it's not a bad thing. Uh, but I want to talk to you for a brief moment, uh, as I mentioned on this topic, the power of an intercessor. And uh, I realize that there are prayer warriors in this room, that there are those that no doubt tap into uh, intercessory prayer uh, on a frequent basis. And I, I do recognize that. I do recognize those in the room. Uh, but I also believe that it is not just 
for the spiritual few. Amen? All right, that means I need to talk about this. It's not just for the faithful few. It's not just for those that we know. We know sister so-and-so, and I can name names here in this church because I know this church well enough. You know, sister so-and-so is a powerful intercessor, a powerful prayer warrior, brother so-and-so. You know, we hear and we know that something is happening in the realm of heaven. And it's not, it is a good thing for those that are walking with God that way. But I believe in this last hour, while we are looking outward, as I already mentioned, in this new chapter, in this way that we are turning here in Christian Life Center, and our eyes are focused on the harvest. Focus, yes, relationship with God, there is no doubt. You'll, you'll never get away from that. But as a result of relationship comes a love for the lost, comes a love for those that are on their way to hell. And in that vein and in that understanding comes a selfless prayer that is talked about in the Word of God, which is intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is a particular prayer for a particular thing at a particular time. If I could bring a definition. I believe Brother Verbal Bean kind of labeled it that way. It's a particular prayer for a particular thing at a particular time. When you are praying intercessory prayer, you are indeed getting a hold of the will of God, lining up with the will of God, connecting with the will of God. We are not praying necessarily for our own desires, our own will, our own wants, our own even understanding of what we desire in this world or even what we think the harvest looks like and how we think the harvest may come. And the more we begin to align our will with the will of God, the more that we decrease and God increases, then it becomes to be God's way. And all of a sudden, in places and in ways that you never even thought imaginable, all of a sudden you see revival, you see harvest, and that harvest being reaped. For example, in this era that we're living in, there are a lot of churches, both in the United States and outside of this country, that uh, of people that believe the Trinitarian belief. And among those Trinitarians, they reading and they study the Word of God and their hunger for God leads and, and drives them to understand, you know what, there is only one God and there is no coexistence of many gods and they come to a the revelation and the understanding of the oneness of God as we know it, as we love it, as we preach it and all of a sudden just like that whole churches desire the truth and whole churches are baptized in Jesus name. Whole churches are filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Maybe in places we didn't even necessarily sow a seed in, but because people prayed intercessorily, God brings a harvest in a particular way. I don't know if this is uh, okay to share or not, but Brother Ellis and I are friends, so he can tell me if it's not okay later. Uh, we're, we're really good friends, so we're all right. But the other night we were talking, and we were talking a, little, a bit about Sweden and a church in Sweden and how there really is no uh, church there central apostolic church there right now in that country. And he said he was there ministering or he was there visiting and they kind of pulled him in, roped him into ministering, that right? Something like that. And, and he said, you know, I, I felt like, you know, it was like the Bible says, the Lord said, out of these rocks, you know, I'll, I'll raise up children of Abraham, even out of these rocks, you know, if there is nobody there. And he said there was a group of about 20 just zealous people for God. And he went there and he began to preach the word of God and all these people received the gift of the Holy Ghost right there in that, that place where he was preaching and teaching. Nobody was necessarily set up a certain way, but God is going to have it his way. And when we begin to align with the will of God, we'll recognize that this harvest, this revival even that we're talking about now in these seven weeks may be unconventional. And you know what, let me, let me rephrase. It will be unconventional. It will be different. It will not be like times past. And so in order to get aligned with the will of God, I believe intercessory prayer will lead us to that. And as I mentioned, intercessory prayer being for a particular thing at a particular time, I also believe that there is no deeper communion with your spirit and the spirit of God. Now, I understand there are many other different 
ways of having relationship with God. That's important to know, and I feel like I must say that. But in this vein of relationship with God, of intercessory prayer, you, a characteristic of it is you lay aside your will. You lay aside your desires. You lay aside your wants and your way. Moses, the Bible tells us, as God would speak to him on the mountain, and one day the children of Israel turned their back on God. They're backslidden, and they're running around naked. They're sacrificing their kids and passing them through the fire, and just their hearts are so far and away from God as they're worshiping this golden cow and, and saying, you know what, this is the God that brought us out of Egypt and out of bondage. And, bondage excuse me. and in that moment, as you, you see that prayer, that relationship with Moses and, and God, Moses prays an intercessory prayer. He stands in the gap. It has nothing to do with him. He's right with God. He's walking with God. And he says, God, don't, don't destroy the children of Israel. You promised them. You said that you would take them to the promised land. And God, if you destroy them now, and God even said, I'll build you a great nation and make you a great people, Moses, after your name. And, and that all sounded great, but Moses recognized that the will of God was to fulfill his promise that he had already spoken in the past. And he says, God, you know what? You didn't call and bring the children of Israel out of bondage to all of a sudden bring them to nothing. You promised that you would take them to the promised land. Therefore, I'm calling you on your will. I'm standing in the gap between the backslidden hearts of the children of Israel and the perfect will of God. And because of that one man that stood in the gap in that moment, uh, all of a sudden God began to recognize that it was his will. And God in that moment, if you will, if you can say, was reminded uh, in that moment of his zealous judgment, he said, you know what? You're right, Moses. Uh, I will love on the children of Israel again. I will fulfill my promise. Uh, I will do my will. Can I tell you it is the will of God that none should perish, but that all have everlasting life. That's what the word of God says, that he would pour out his spirit on all flesh in the last days. But I believe God is looking for somebody like a Moses that will stand in the gap. These people out here, they may not know Jesus. They may not feel Jesus. They may be so bound in their sin, but the reality is God is waiting for an interview. Intercessor. God's waiting for a Moses uh, to begin to rise to the occasion. And can I tell you, Christian Life Center, we have got to stop waiting uh, for the usual intercessors. Uh, you know what, well, let me just talk about it. We've got to stop waiting uh, for the ladies to have their prayer group on Saturday morning and say they'll take care of all the spiritual warfare. No, no, no. God is raising people up now that are willing uh, to whosoever will. We're not waiting on Acts 29. I know they're full of fire. I know Lifeline is all full of the Holy Ghost. But God is calling somebody to just lay aside the busyness of life, the cares of the day you've got, and say there is a more important task at hand. There's a more important task. There are people on their way to hell right now. They will not know who Jesus is unless we stand in the gap. I feel the Holy Ghost in this room, and I'm telling you, God is raising us up to look beyond. To look, I know you've got situations. I know you've got downfalls. We've all got them. I know you've got things you need and want answered from God, things you've been praying for for years. But I know there's a witness of intercessors in this room that say, man, when you lay aside your will and pray the will of God be done, that's the moment that God answers prayers uh, that have never even been, been answered before. Isn't that right? God begins to answer prayers uh, that you've never even asked God. Uh, you've only fought them, but because you've decided not my will, but thy will be done, it's in that moment that God begins to move, not only there in that place, but even in your life as well. He is raising us up in this hour. I believe it. I believe it with all my heart. You can be seated. You know, I often use this Example, my dad, he, uh, and I, as I mentioned last night, I like to be as transparent 
as possible, as you all will allow, and you all just kind of keep bringing it out of me, so I'm going to do so. But, uh, you know, my dad, he's a real big guy. I didn't get any of the height. He's about 6'4", and uh, he's just a real big guy in every way. Anyone that's met him knows you just, just kind of don't want to mess with him. You know, he's just got that look about him, and uh, he's just that way. So as a kid, you just never say no. You know, of course, we would get, we would get spanked, but at the same time, he just give you the look, and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely, whatever you want, you know. And we had church on Friday night, and uh, we used to have church Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday faithfully for years. That's the only that's the way I grew up. Some people are like, oh, man, I can only make it Sunday. Anyway, I think we need more, not less. I'm going to keep on going, though. And so I remember my dad would, he would wake us up. I'd invite a bunch of friends over from church, you know, so we can hang out and just, I was a kid, just have a good time on Saturday. And we had no school, nothing to do. And our room had windows in it. And so he would kind of open up the blinds real, real, real slow, you know, kind of cruel. Don't worry, I've said this in front of him. He's all right. Just real slow. And then, you know, he, the sun would just blare in about 7 a.m. in the morning. It's Saturday. It's the will of God to sleep in on Saturday, right? Somebody say amen. All right. You know, and, and we would, and mind you, my dad would also wake us up at 5 a.m. for prayer. That was just a way of life. I, when I got to CLC, you know, some people get surprised by that. I was like, oh, this feels good. It feels like home. You know, and. I remember, though, that Saturday, I guess he would let us sleep in until 7, and he would open up the blinds and real slow, and then he'd kind of throw the stereo on real, real loud, but he would do that slow, too, you know, and, you know, it's just kind of, you can, you can jump, you know, kind of pull the Band-Aid off, and you'd be like, all right, that's fine, it hurt for a moment, but he was just real slow, and the stereo would start blaring, you know, and, and just whatever Holy Ghost song was on in that moment, it would just start going, and, I mean, he'd say, all right, rise and shine, everybody. Why don't you guys go brush your teeth? I was like eight, you know. Why don't you go brush your teeth, go eat some Cheerios. After that, you got literally 20 minutes to get all that done. After that, meet me out in the garage. We're cleaning the entire garage. We're going to pull everything out, dust it, clean it, all of that. All my friends are like, oh, man, that, I didn't want to do that, you know. That's not what I came here for. I'm going to call my mom, dad, come pick me up. By that time, it was too late. My friends didn't want to come over anymore. Don't worry, I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. They didn't want to come over after a while. You know, I was like, man, what's going on? My dad thought it was free labor, you know. Now, this has never, ever happened. It probably never will. But if you just go with me for a moment, I think I can explain what I'm talking about just a little bit better for a moment here on our natural level. Now, in the event that one day, one, I've just explained my dad to you, all right. He's a very hard worker. He taught us how to work hard with our hands and, and so on, even on Saturday morning. And all my friends, too, he say, yeah, they don't do this at their house. They're doing it here. You know, it didn't matter. And so this has never happened. But in the event that one Saturday morning I woke up at 6 a.m. and said, Pops, you stay in the bed today. This has never happened. I just was never that good of a child, okay? But never that good of a son. But, you know, in that realm. But in the event that I was just superb, overachiever. And I said, Pops, you know what? You go ahead and you you just, you lay down today. You, you go ahead and just relax. You sleep in. I've already got everything taken care of. The, the boys are already brushing their teeth. Their Cheerios are already being poured into the bowls right now. Don't worry about it. We're going to take care of it. And all these eight, nine-year-olds over there pouring Cheerios. I mean, can you imagine just for a moment if my dad, do you think if my dad heard me say that, that he would say, you know what, son? That is a very nice gesture. But I'm going to let you sleep in here this morning, and I'm going to go ahead and clean out the garage. How many of you parents, if your daughter, my, my sister, hates washing dishes, I know she went here and half of you know her, but nonetheless, she hates washing dishes to this day, and she has never told my mom, Mom, you know what, I'll take care of everything, don't worry about it. But in the event that she did, I guarantee you, that my mom would not say, oh, no, 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 you go ahead and kick your feet up today. It's all right. You know, I'm going to go ahead and take care of everything. 
I guarantee that would not be the case. Matter of fact, if, if that was me and my dad, my dad would literally be like, oh, yeah, oh, that's awesome, that's great. Okay, the shovels are over there, the brooms are right there, I want this done, and after that, I want you to go pull out that tree in the front. He, did, he actually made us do that one day, and we pulled the whole stump out. I mean, it was crazy, with, with just a saw, no chainsaw, no none of that stuff, you know, and so we're working hard. But that's how my parents would respond. I guess we got some really good parents here, you know, that are like, no, no, my kids are angels. Is that you? How many of you parents would actually say, it's all right, you can go in and rest? I don't think so. How many of you parents would say, you know what, yeah, the dishes are dirty over there, and don't forget that cup on the counter? How many of you would say that? And the soap is right under the sink, and I just bought extra so you won't run out. Don't worry about it. Everything be taken care of. Thank you. Turn over and go back to sleep. Why? Why would you do that, right? You would be excited that they would actually even make the gesture because they have decided, you know what, I know it's the will of mom and dad for this thing to be cleaned up, and therefore I'm going to go ahead and just, I know it, it probably has never happened with your kids and that's why you can't fathom the idea. But in the event that it ever happened, you would be so on board, so ecstatic, so absolutely uh, grateful that they would come and jump on board with what you desired for that home and your life and their life. And you would say, you know what, here's all the tools. I'm going to help you accomplish my will. And when it comes to God, obviously on a much more heavy scale, that's what happens. God says, you know what, I'm so, in this moment, that is my will, not to pray what you desire to pray, but that those that are lost uh, would be reached. And when you team up, you say, God, uh, I'm going to be a vessel that you can pray, that you can use, uh, that your spirit can begin to move through, and that your will be done. Can I tell you, that's a prayer that will not be stopped. Uh, That's a prayer that no devil in hell, no agenda of the enemy, uh, no plan of the enemy can be stopped. When you decide to put aside your will and begin to pray the perfect will of God, it cannot be stopped. And so you begin to link with the perfect will of God. I understand I've explained a natural example to help us understand a spiritual principle in the word of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, it tells us for If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I'll pray with the spirit and I'll pray with the understanding also. And it goes on concerning singing in the spirit as well. And so it lets us know, yes, we can pray with our understanding in our own language and what we know and what we understand. But a lot of times when we pray that way, we are praying for our own need, our own wants. A lot of times when we're praying in our own language, it's our desires that we are reaching out to God for. But then the Bible tells us we can pray in the Spirit also. And so when we begin to pray in the Spirit also, and that spirit of intercession begins to move through you and move on you and all of a sudden you begin to feel the power of the Holy Ghost move and you feel that depth begin to flow through you. It's in that moment that you are connected with God. Can I tell you that a characteristic of intercession is not to say, God, I got five minutes. You can use me to intercede. No, no, no. This is God. Whenever you want to let me go, that's when I'll go ahead and leave. I know I've got a busy schedule, but there's nothing more important than what you want me to pray right now. There's nothing more important uh, than your will being done through me. I'm here to challenge somebody in this room uh, that maybe you haven't interceded uh, like you've wanted to. Maybe God has called you before and you say, you know what, I've been just a little bit too busy. I'm here to let you know we are nearing the end uh, and God is waking people up. Uh, God's calling somebody to begin to war in the power of the Holy Ghost uh, that all of Stockton will know, uh, that all of this county will know that this entire world will know who Jesus is. Somebody lift up your hands for a moment and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. There's some that have just received the Holy Ghost. God will use you too. God will use you too to begin to pray in the power of the Holy Ghost.
Why don't we clap our hands and thank the Lord? I recognize that there are many intercessors in this room, but it's those that have not yet begun to walk in this realm consistently. And I'm not talking every day. You can't intercede every single day of your life. We must also relate to the joy of the Lord being our strength. That's what the Bible says. When we intercede, we recognize that, that death worketh in us, as Paul mentioned, that you might have life. And so we, we recognize that. We understand. We also must rejoice. But in, in understanding this, this principle, we are awakened. We recognize there is a task at hand. There is a job to be done. And God is calling everybody, whosoever will. My, uh, my father, as I mentioned, pastors a church down in Los Angeles, and there was a, a lady there at his church, and uh, she was woken up about four in the morning by God. How many of you, God's ever woken you up middle of the night, a time you didn't necessarily desire to be up? Would you raise your hand and say amen? All right, you can go put your hands down. And many times, you know, if I'm being honest with you all, we've, we've said, oh, God, you know, maybe tomorrow sheets are feel kind of nice right now. How many, how many of us have done that before? Amen. We've done that. On this occasion, she was obedient to God. And about 4 a.m. in the morning, she woke up, went to the living room. And when she got there, she said, I began to walk back and forth in the living room and just pray in the Holy Ghost. And I felt the spirit of intercession begin to move. And that burden began to flow over me. And I didn't really know all of what was going on. And sometimes you won't as you're praying in the spirit. And she said, well, I was speaking with other tongues there, walking back and forth. The Lord finally spoke to me on his time. And when he spoke to me, he said, now I want you to call your brother. She said, but God, I don't, I don't want to call my brother. You know, it's her oldest brother. And she said, I, I, you know, she was trying to kind of debate it for a moment. She said, God, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to wake him up and get him upset and so on. He wasn't saved. And filled with the Holy Ghost or baptized in Jesus' name or any of that. He's not apostolic. And, and uh, she said, but, you know, all right, God, because you've asked, I, I'm going to do it. And so she calls him. And when she called, guess who answered 4 a.m. in the morning and the other end of the phone was her brother. He says, hey, what's going on? Wide awake, ready to go for the day. And she said, you're awake? And he said, yeah, I, I've actually, you know, just been kind of dealing with some things and, and so on. And uh and she said, well, the Lord woke me up and began to, to pray for you. And the Lord spoke to me to call you. And uh, I was wondering, you know, why you're even up at this time. He said, well, we've been getting to an argument, argument, my wife and I. And I came to, to work real early because I've been sleeping at mom's house. And it's just been real rough the past several days. Mind you, he's not apostolic, didn't have a relationship with God the way that many of you do to call upon the Lord. And, and so he says, you know, I just came to work real early because I, I was just upset and didn't really have anything else to do. And so he was up at that hour in the morning. And she said, well, I didn't really uh, know all of what's going on. She said, but I, I recognize that something was wrong. She said, while I was interceding, while I was in prayer, speaking with other tongues, the Spirit of God was moving through me. She said, I seen a vision, and then the Lord took me into your, your home. And she said, I went into the kitchen there in this vision. And when I got to a particular part of the kitchen, she said there was a dark figure and I couldn't go past it. And she said, that's when I called you. And he said, wow, that's, that's unbelievable. And he said, well, the, the thing about all this is that that's the reason for this argument that my wife and I have been going through. He said, right there where that black figure was at that you talked about in the vision, he said, there was a, there is a Buddha statue there in the kitchen. And my wife has been offering different offerings to it every single day, and she wanted me to start doing the same. I told her I wouldn't do it. She, she, he said, you know, this is why we've been getting in this argument. And I began to realize that he had no life, no ability to call upon the name of the Lord because he doesn't have that relationship, that covenant with God, or even some case that understanding. And 
God woke somebody up who was faithful. God woke somebody up who said, you know what, I'm willing to be selfless. I'm willing to put my own desires. You know, God, that I, I don't have everything all figured out, but if you wake me up at 4 a.m. in the morning, I'm going to be there, God, because I recognize there's somebody out there that needs me. There's somebody out there that needs you to begin to move in their life and touch their heart. Can I tell you, God will show you things in the spirit. God will give you vision and understanding. You want to walk with God in dimensions you never have. Why don't you go ahead and link up with the perfect will of God, that his will be done. Not my will, God, but thy will be done for those that are on their way to hell, for those that have just got a diagnosis and fear has gripped their heart and they don't have Jesus to hold on to. Can you imagine what would happen if we had a revival of intercessory prayer here in this church? Can you imagine what would happen? The stories that have already been told, the testimonies that have already come from these altars, how much more we could testify of the power of God. Would you lift up your hands for a moment? I feel conviction settling in here right now in this room. The power of the Holy Ghost uh, is here right now. I'm telling you, people will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, people will be healed. Uh, people will be delivered uh, here right now. Those that are on the edge uh, in the name of Jesus, when you decide uh, to pray the perfect will of God, go ahead, pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. Go ahead. That's all right. You feel it in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray intercessorily in the Holy Ghost. That's what the church did, the early church, when Peter was about to be killed. Uh, and in that moment, God sent an angel. They prayed without ceasing. Uh, there was such a burden, a move in their spirit uh, that their will, their own lives uh, that were at risk uh, were not the concern. They recognized, God, uh, we want your will to come to pass. Uh, we want you to do all you can do that your will be done. God's waking somebody up for these seven weeks. God's waking somebody up right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord's waking, shaking somebody up right now that you would pray intercessorily throughout these weeks. I'm Watch what revival happens in the name of Jesus. Watch the people that begin to come and say, you know what? I had a dream. I had a vision. I had something happened last night. I've got to know more about this Jesus. Go ahead. You can find a place in this altar if you'd like. If you're praying intercessorily right now, you can go ahead and find a place in this altar and begin to pray in the spirit. Would you do that right now all over this room? Would you do that right now? Would you lift up your hands and would you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost as you're already doing? If you want to find a place in this altar, you want to find a place there where you're at, whatever you like, go ahead and just pray in the Holy Ghost. God is moving on somebody. God's moving on somebody that has not yet uh, tapped in. God's moving on somebody that has has not yet walked uh, in the realm of intercessory prayer. That's it. That's all right. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, somebody stand in the gap right now. That's all right. We've been praying the Holy Ghost.
I can feel many people already moving into the realm of intercessory prayer. And there are others still have yet to connect in that realm. If you're up here praying, you can continue quietly for a moment. What I'd like to do is I want to ask everyone if we can all stand. If you're out in the pews for a moment. I know some of you are praying out in the pews. That's all right. Let's all stand if you're out in the pews. <clears throat> and I want to ask that all together, I feel like there is something very, very powerful concerning unity in intercessory prayer, just like the book of Acts talks about as they prayed as Peter was delivered. And so what I'd like us to do, if you're standing out in the pew, if you want to pray in this realm, this dimension, maybe it's Many of you have already, and some of you have not. Would you just kind of make your way on down to this altar that we can pray together for a moment? And when you get here, I'll tell you one last thing, and then we'll, we'll pray together. As people are coming down here in this altar, parents, young people, everybody. As people are coming, I remember being in uh, my pastor's house over the dinner table, and while we were over the dinner table, one man of God began to talk about the burden he had for the Muslims and the burden for uh, those that are <clears throat> under the Islamic belief. And he said, you know, I've got a burden. I intercede for them often that God would reveal truth to them. That God would reveal himself to them. And as he began to speak over the dinner table, I could feel the Spirit of God beginning to move. There were other preachers and ministers there. And he said, right over the dinner table, he, I recognize that God is not a respecter of, of the time, the moment, and the place. He, he's ready to move whenever we allow, whenever we respond, as Brother Ellis mentioned a moment ago. And so the Spirit of God began to move over that dinner table, and he said, why don't we pray right now? And we all together, now he's prayed this prayer by himself many times. But all together, we begin to pray. The spirit of intercession came over us. I begin to feel that depth as we prayed in the Holy Ghost. As we prayed in the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God began to move. And after a, a moment there over that dinner table, we could feel the spirit of God lift, that heaviness, that burden lift off. And, and after that lifted off, I remember one man of God spoke out. And he said, you know, as soon as we begin to pray intercessorily, he said, I saw angels come into this room. And as they came into this room, I watched as we began to pray that they took out their swords. And when they took out their swords, after we were done praying, the Spirit of God lifted off. They left this room with their swords drawn. I believe on that day that God, as we linked with the will of God to be done, many prayers we could have prayed, many things we could have asked God for, but on that day, it was right there and then about those people that needed Jesus. And they came and drew their swords in response to our connecting with the will of God. We weren't praying for angels. We weren't asking for none of that. We were seeking the will of God to be done. And in that moment, I believe that God allowed those angels to go and accomplish his perfect will in those countries, in those places where that Islamic faith is. Can I tell you, I believe that same authority is in this room right now. I believe that same authority is in this room right now. Here today, if we'll link together in the name of Jesus and begin to intercede all over this room, I believe that God's going to accomplish his perfect will here tonight. Would you lift up your voice? Would you lift up your hands in the Holy Ghost? Would you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost all over this room right now?